Hello, Professor Laird here, and welcome to the first day of class for the fall 2023 Political Ideologies online course. Today we're going to talk about the syllabus in detail, and there's lots of things on the syllabus that uh, you need to be aware of uh, on day one as we start this course. It's an online course. There's going to be some specific requirements that I'm going to need you to uh, pay attention to, particularly that I'm going to try to treat this class as much as I can as an interactive class, just like a, an on-campus class. We're going to use Mondays and Wednesdays as our class day, and you'll have that entire day, the Mondays and Wednesdays, to uh, do the things that will be assigned to you. I'll be posting video lectures each Monday and Wednesday. A discussion forum will be posted after that, and you'll have until 9 p.m. each Monday night and Wednesday night. You'll have 14-hour window in order to do that, but it's going to be extremely important that you keep up on a daily basis with this, this class. I'm going to make it as interactive as I possibly can. So today we're going to go through the syllabus in uh, minute detail. Now, if it sounds like that I'm not from around here, Yes, I am from Texas. So let's let's get into the first of all the Canvas operating system, which is new, at least for for me, the first semester that I'm dealing with uh, with Canvas. So uh, we'll kind of work out some of the kinks together on it. But what I want to do first is go into Canvas, show you where we are, and then get into the syllabus in detail. All right, so when you get into your dashboard there for Canvas, and if you have any issues on getting into Canvas, you'll want to contact the help desk. But you'll go to our course here, Political Ideologies. It takes you to the home page of your class. And the way I've got it set up is that everything you'll need in order to do uh, the requirements for this class will be in the modules section. Now, announcements will go directly to your school email, so you will get those each Monday and Wednesday morning when I announce what the uh, schedule is for that day or any other things that I may need to alert you of. The announcements will go to your email, but your modules is where everything's going to be set up. So you can see right here, week one, and according to the syllabus, you'll notice that I've got it set up by weeks as well. We have two class days per week, each Monday and Wednesday. Week number one is just uh, today, Wednesday, September 6th. You'll see the, the welcome right there that just gives you a general overview of what to prepare for, but we're going to get into significant more detail with the syllabus here. So what you'll do is click on the syllabus and it will take you to a view of the syllabus, and you can also download the syllabus in a PDF file as well. All right, so as you can see here, class lectures, video lectures, will be posted each Monday and Wednesday morning. I'll get into the details of that here shortly. You will be able to reach me through my email. That's the best way, rather than trying to go through the messages of Canvas. Let's just go straight to my email, rlaird at bergen.edu. I will be available. I'm pretty flexible because Mondays and Wednesdays are going to be my online class days. More than one online class, but I'm going to be at my online station, which is all days, Mondays and Wednesdays, and we can set up a video conference. I'll be pretty flexible on that. As I'll mention here in a minute, I'm going to require you to meet with me at least once very early on within the first couple of weeks of class. I want to meet you face to face, talk about some things via the WebEx video conference. Okay, so we're looking at political ideologies. This is where we're going to be kind of broadly looking at several different ideologies that have shaped our modern world of politics. Importantly, liberalism, and then the aspects of liberalism, such as conservatism, even a little bit of progressivism in there. We'll also look at other ideologies that come up over the past few centuries, socialism, communism, fascism, Islamism, feminism. 
liberation ideologies, even environmentalism. We'll go through the schedule here in a minute, and that's going to lay out exactly what we're going to be talking about through the entire semester. Now, as far as textbooks goes, this one is required, Political Ideologies and the Democratic Ideal. It is a very good book. Most of my lectures come straight out of this book. So if you read the chapter before the lecture, you're going to have just a little bit more of a heads up there. You're going to be a little bit more prepared and have more information to work with. The tests will be based on my lectures, which come much of it comes from the book. So you will want to get this book as soon as possible. The reader is optional because what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to sign some readings out of this book and I've got them to where I can post them on Canvas so that you can read them in uh, PDF form there on, on the Canvas. But if you are a student of political science or even political philosophy or anything of that nature, I would recommend this book because there is so many excerpts of really famous, some infamous articles over the past several centuries, even going all the way back to Aristotle and Plato, it is just crammed full of interesting, useful uh, writings that uh, would be a valuable addition to any library if you are looking at social science at all in general. I'll be posting, like I said, those supplemental readings as well as some other articles on Canvas that you can access. You're going to want to keep up with current events and world politics through credible news sources. This is an extremely part, part of my of all my classes is that I try to teach an appreciation for legitimate, credible sources rather than just going to Google and taking the first line of Google, which, you know, would be acceptable in some cases. But uh, we're going to actually learn how to access the library databases for peer reviewed academic journals. It can be extremely important. In fact, I I use this term peer-reviewed academic journal so much, I even have my own acronym for it there. So uh, we will be learning. I'll be feeding that to you as we go. Some of you have probably already looked up into the databases as far as peer-reviewed journals and written papers before. There will be a paper assignment that will be based, based on these legitimate, credible sources. Because of the fact that you've got to watch these videos each Monday and Wednesday, you'll need a computer with visual audio capabilities. And when we have our video conferences, I'll need to be able to see you and hear you so that we can interact face to face as needed. Now, extremely important. This is not going to be a self-paced course. You're not going to be able to just poke your head into the class every few weeks or so and say, hmm, what, what would happen over the past few weeks? And let me see if I can catch up. It's not going to work that way. You'll be, attendance will be taken every Monday and Wednesday based on you watching the video and responding to the discussion forum. So I'm going to try to make this as interactive as I can on a daily basis. Otherwise, this course is not going to be effective. You will need to access Canvas and your school email every day to check as to what's going on. As I said, video lectures, such as the one you're watching right now, will be posted every Monday and every Wednesday morning. And they will be posted by 7 a.m. Following that, I'll post a discussion forum around noon. But the bottom line is, is that you have to watch that video lecture all the way through in its entirety before you enter into the discussion forum. Otherwise, I won't be able to count you as attended that day. It'd be like sitting through the entire class. I, if somebody comes to class and stays for five minutes and walks out the door, I would obviously count them absent. So you have to watch the video lecture all the way through in its entirety, normal speed, before you even enter that discussion forum. That way I'll be able to see that you're actively participating in the class and you'll be accounted uh, attendance for that day. Again, I'm gonna require you to meet with me at least once face-to-face -face in a WebEx video conference. 
Occasionally, I'll I'll have class meetings that will try to uh, accommodate your schedule so that we can get everybody together a few times. We might have to break that up into a couple of meetings, but hopefully we can get everybody together. It's a fairly small class and have some group meetings via video conference as well, group discussions, questions, things like that. Again, you will need to be uh, visible and audible on those meetings. I need to be able to see who I'm talking with on the video conferences. This is essential to your participation grade. We'll talk about as far as the percent requirements here in a minute. Attendance, that'll be taken after watching the video lecture in its entirety and then responding to the discussion forum, then you'll be counted attendant for that day. So I'm treating it just like a classroom class. You'll have until 9 p.m. each Monday and Wednesday to complete those two assignments. So technically what you'll have is almost a... 13, 14 hour window in order to watch a 35 to 45 minute video. And then it should take you just a few minutes to respond to the discussion forum because I'm not going to be asking you to delve into any uh, extensive research. I'm just going to want you to give me some input as far as that day's lecture or what the general topic was. I may ask a kind of a general question that gives you a chance to provide some insight based on what you've learned. So that will be your attendance for each Monday and Wednesday. Just like I do in the classroom, each absence results in a deduction of five points from your attendance grade. Now, if you don't watch the video, you'll be counted absent. And that's a, a cardinal sin for this course is that if you just don't bother to watch the video and then you go right into the discussion forum. You can't do that. I'll be reminding you of that many times for the first few weeks of the class because otherwise this, this class is going to be useless if you don't do that. You have to watch the video lectures to do well in the class and obviously your attendance grade depends on you watching the videos before you enter into the discussion forum. If you repeat what somebody else has already posted, for example, you could have points deducted for failing to and follow the instructions of the discussion forum. So again, this is the single most important requirement of the class right here. Students are required to watch the video lecture in its entirety all the way through at normal speed, just like you're sitting in the classroom before you even enter the discussion forum. You can't enter the discussion forum until you've completely watched the video. Otherwise, a professor might assume that you're trying to cheat on that day's attendance. Just like in the classroom, you have to sit through the entire class to get counted attendance. Same thing here. The attendance and participation will be 15% of the grade. So that matters. It's pretty important. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to gauge how much interaction a student is providing with this course. It does matter because the more engaged you are in the course, the more interactive you are in the course following these uh, requirements, the better you're going to do in the class anyway. Just like in a normal classroom, you want to show up and pay attention, follow the instructions, all that stuff. It's going to be the same thing here. Now, the forums will be closed at 9 p.m. And like I said, you'll have plenty of time on Mondays and Wednesdays to accomplish those two fairly simple tasks that will not take very much time within that 14-hour window. You just need to uh, organize your time, schedule it out. But once that 9 p.m. deadline is, is closed, that's it. That's the day's over. And please do not email and asked to turn the thing back on, no, it's, it's, it's done. We move on to the next day. Just like in a classroom, if you, win, if you miss one class day, that's not going to make a microscopic blip on your final grade of the course. But, but you don't want to continue to miss classes. That is something that tells the professor that this student is really not very much engaged in the class if they just miss a lot of classes. So you just don't want to do that. This is college. We're trying to Take this up to the next level. 
Now, uh, some of the discussion forums might be a group exercise where you might have to communicate through the forum. The forum could also be in a quiz format, could set up a short little quiz, and that is where each student will give their own response without being able to access what the other responses are. Now, being an online class, this is the, we have a communication policy that we have to follow. Again, you're required to check Canvas in your school email on a daily basis so that you can keep up as to what's going on. Read this very carefully. It's just uh, common sense stuff about online behavior, which we call netiquette behavior. So be sure you uh, observe those common sense and common courtesy rules as far as dealing with other people online. Now let's talk about the tests. There'll be three online tests during the course spread out. Each will cover four to five chapters each. The quizzes will be set up on Canvas. They'll basically be open book, open note, but it, very importantly, they will be timed. So you'll need to be prepared for these tests before you start them. Each test will be 20% of the grade, so that's 60% of your total grade for those three tests. You'll have, for each test, you'll have 35 minutes to complete the test in one sitting. So that's extremely important because you're gonna need to be ready and prepared before you start the test. You're not gonna be able to look up answers and come up with an essay from scratch in that 35 minutes. Everything will need to be prepared ahead of time. It's extremely important. You will not have time to look up answers during the test. You'll need to be prepared. And I will give you a study guide that will be telling you exactly what the topics are that we discussed in the lectures, which ones will be on the test. So you'll have a guideline to prepare for. I'll even give you some sample essay questions that you can prepare ahead of time so that you'll be ready to do that in that time period. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna have major problems on these tests unless you're extremely prepared for them. So that's another thing. I'm trying to treat this similar to an on-campus on course. What I would recommend is that you treat these tests exactly like you treat a test on campus, which, which is closed book, closed notes. You're gonna wanna be that prepared before you start these tests. I cannot stress that any more strongly. The test will be a variation of different types of questions, multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, true or false, short answer, and short essay. The essays will not be elaborate because you've got a time period there to deal with. So you're gonna to wanna to pack a lot of stuff into a fairly short amount of space there. And so the, the short essay questions, you'll be required to demonstrate a fundamental under, understanding of what's being asked in your own words in complete sentences. So again, you wanna be prepared with some sample essays based on the, the study guide that I'm providing for you. And if you just regurgitate and list out bullet points that are shown in the lecture slides, that will not be enough. Anybody can just copy and paste bullet points from a slide. That does not demonstrate that you understand the material. So you don't wanna copy and paste anything. I would highly recommend that you're, while you're watching the video lectures in their entirety, you take notes. That will help you prepare for the test because that will fill out your understanding as well as giving you a little bit more ammunition to write a short essay with if you take notes. Obviously, reading the book if that particular lecture is coming from the book. Also very important, answers to the test questions will come from the lectures, which come from the textbook and the assigned readings. You will not be getting any of these test answers from Google and certainly not from AI. We'll talk about AI here in a second. And it will be immediately apparent if a student is just going out and finding random answers off the internet rather than giving me the answers that we discussed in the video lectures. That's very apparent very quickly and you won't do well on the tests if you do that. Now, if you miss a test without any prior communication with the professor, that's gonna be a zero because just like in the classroom, if you just don't show up for a test and then don't tell the professor anything and then show up a week later and say, oh, I guess I need to take the test. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to be prepared. You have to be engaged in the class. You need to be ready. 
I can't let a student take a test after the test has already been graded and passed out to the other students, or in this case, posted online where all the answers are there. That just can't happen. So you've got to keep up with the schedule. I'm going to show you the schedule day by day here in a few minutes, and you'll know exactly what day the tests are on. And you'll have a nine-hour window in which to take a 35-minute test with a 9 p.m. deadline. Now, there's going to as a result of this, there's no makeups or extra credit or extensions for any of the tests. You need to stay engaged. It's your responsibility to keep up with the uh, schedule. And uh, the tests will typically be graded before the next class day. Now, very important, if you are eligible for accommodations, you need to let me know that immediately. Give me a, send me an email of the official paperwork there so that I will be aware of that before the test time comes around. So again, your responsibility to make sure this is done and that the information gets to the right people. Now let's just talk a few minutes about the paper assignment. I don't want you to stress out over the paper just yet because I'm going to be feeding you along as we go on the paper. But uh, in fact, I'll provide within a couple of weeks, I'll provide you a list of topics to choose from, which has got a an assortment of philosophies and ideologies and various isms that have uh, popped up uh, around the world. And what you will do is choosing one of those general ideologies, you will then focus on a specific region or a group or a subculture somewhere in the world that is embracing that ideology or there's particularly some social movement that's coming up somewhere in the world or in America that is espousing this new philosophy or an old philosophy, that'll be your first challenge is to decide on a topic. Again, you'll have several weeks in which to do that. I'll show you the schedule here in a minute. When that topic is due, which is Wednesday, October 11th, it'll just, I'll just need one half page summary of the topic that you want to write about. Now, the format for all the paper assignments, which will be on a Word file that you'll post to Canvas, be double spaced, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. So keep note of that. Everything that you turn in will be that format. It's, uh, consistency is pretty important in a class like this where I need to get everybody's giving me their assignments in the same format. Uh, it makes a big difference. Plus, following instructions is part of any course requirements, so you're just going to have to get used to that anyway. Now, this summary, you'll this half page, all you're going to really need to do is just briefly describe which of these philosophies or isms or, or ideologies that you want to talk about and where, and that's extremely important. Where, what group, what subculture, what region of the world are you focusing on that is engaging in this particular ideology? could be something very large and broad, or it could be something fairly small and regional. Uh, some subculture is, is uh, perhaps trying to start a social movement for more recognition in their country, and they're embracing this particular ideology. So there's, there's lots of stuff out there that you can find to uh, write about, whatever is interesting to you or that you want to learn about. Now, if there's some overlap, or if your topic is not clear, I'll, I may ask you to resubmit it. There's not going to be a penalty for that. I just need to get these topics finalized as soon as possible so that we can move on to the next phase of the paper assignment. So if I ask you to resubmit your topic, you're going to want to do that immediately. Uh, clean it up, clear it up, perhaps be a little bit more specific or whatever it is that I may need you to do. Correct that and get it back to me as soon as possible so that we can get our topics locked in and move on to the next phase. And that next phase will include looking up sources. So that's something that we'll be talking about later. As far as the paper itself, it won't be due until Monday, December 11th. It will be a five page paper minimum. Once again, it will be attached to Canvas in a Word file and the format will again be the same double space, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. Now, very important, there'll be a minimum of six references for your paper on a separate page. At least four of those 
will need to be peer-reviewed academic journals. So this is extremely important because we're going to get most of our sources from these peer-reviewed journals that are using academic analysis to try to, you know, examine this topic uh, a little bit deeper, impartially, unbiased with critical thinking. As I said, I'll be posting lots of information as we go on this paper assignment as far as the general format of the paper, how to access the library databases, how to cite your sources, how to format your peer-reviewed journals on your reference page, all that will be incrementally learning that as we go. Just like in any classroom, the, the object is to learn, not to spout what you've already think you know. At your age, I was there, you're still young, still got a lot of learning to do. Just like that, the paper will be an objective, critical, unbiased analysis of your issue. I'll provide a PDF file guide to writing your paper that provides some useful information on writing a more interesting, informative paper. The paper will not be for the purpose of expressing your opinions. It's going to be for you to demonstrate what you've learned from your readings. So if you read a lot of really good, legitimate, credible sources, and then that paper, you're describing what you've learned, can't go wrong with that. It's not about you telling me what you think is right or wrong with the world. We'll save that for later. We want to learn the basics first of what's going on and why, what for, how come, the history of how we got here with these various ideologies. We need to understand that first before we go out there and telling everybody that I'm right and you're wrong. Now, you don't want to copy and paste anything. You're graded on your ability to gather information from these credible sources and display your understanding of that topic in your own words. That's powerful stuff when you do that, because in some cases you're reading some pretty sophisticated material. You're figuring out what they did, what they learned, what their conclusions were. Then you're paraphrasing that in your own words and describing to someone else, such as me, what you learned from that. And that is really a very important tool to learning more, doing that exercise. Now, the honor code is in effect. Any form of cheating will not be tolerated, and you could be expelled from school for cheating. As far as the online tests go, there will be no communication between 12 noon and 9 p.m. on the test day. No interaction, communication whatsoever between students once that period starts. Now, I'll be available for questions, and you can even have your own you know, study groups I don't know uh, if you want to try to arrange that online. We can talk about that later. But as far as you preparing for the test, that's up to you. But once that test period starts, no communication, no interaction at all. And if there's any suspicious similarities between any student's tests, that could warrant an investigation. So you don't even want to go there. As far as the paper goes, obviously that will be your students, that will be your own work, plagiarizing, Anything is forbidden. That's a form of cheating. Use of AI in writing the paper will be forbidden, and it will not even be practical anyway for your paper because you're writing your paper based on about six or eight sources, and uh, you're basically paraphrasing what you've learned from those handful of sources. So AI would be totally impractical to use for this type of assignment anyway. And if you do use AI, it will be immediately apparent because it'll be mish trying to mishmash stuff together. And that's not what you're doing. You're telling me what you've learned from your various sources and then coming up with your own summary wrap up and conclusions at the end of that paper. You want to follow the honor, honor code very closely. I'll be providing instructions on how to cite your quotes. Don't copy and paste anything at any time. Here's the grade breakdown. Like I said, 20% for each of the tests. There's no makeups, no extensions, no extra credit on the tests. Your paper assignment is 25% of your grade. So you're going to want to put some effort in that to, to look up some good sources. Give me an interesting narrative on what you've learned. Uh, there will be a late penalty if you turn that in late that will accrue with each week. Obviously, I cannot accept any papers after December 20th, because uh, I got to get grades in immediately. 
and there will be no incompletes for this course because you'll have plenty of time to do the assignments required within the time allotted. And participation, again, as we talked about, is 15%. There's no excused absences. You're going to have, like I said, that 14-hour window in which to do uh, two fairly short assignments and the no extensions to the uh, discussion forums. It shuts down at 9 p.m. and then we move on to the next class day. So now let's talk about the schedule. Some uh, general guidelines here. The deadline to, to respond to each dis discussion forum, as I said, is uh, 9 p.m. each Monday and Wednesday. Those are our class days. If there's an assignment that's due that day, it will need to be posted on Canvas by 9 p.m. deadline as well. And then if they're on the test days, the test will shut down at 9 p.m. as well. Now, keep in mind, if you've got a 35 minute time limit to take that test, you're obviously going to want to start that test before 825 so that you'll have the entire 35 minutes to take that test before it just completely shuts down at 9 p.m. But like I said, the the test will probably be posted by noon. So you'll have at least a nine hour window to take a 35 minute test. And you'll know what days those are gonna be on as you'll see right here to plan ahead for that. So let's look at the schedule. Today, Wednesday, September 6th, we're looking at the video right now on the discussion of the syllabus. Week two, on each week, we've got a Monday and Wednesday except for the uh, Thanksgiving week. But as you can see right here on Monday, September 11th, I'll be posting the video lecture for chapter one, which is introduction to ideologies. There'll be a discussion forum that will follow each of these video lectures. Again, you'll have to accomplish all that within that day, Monday, September 11th by 9 p.m. And then Wednesday, September 13th, we'll have a supplemental video lecture on the evolution of the modern brain and the modern state. It's a good historical overview that's going to kind of set up our foundation for when liberalism and democracy starts to uh, come about in the uh, 16th and 17th centuries around that period. Again, discussion forums will follow each video lecture. So you can see right here, just like in Canvas, I've got it, I'm going to have it broken down by weeks. Here we've got the video lectures shown here. Week four, I'm going to post a video that gives you an overview of the class paper assignment. And then you'll notice right here that on Monday, October 9th, that's going to be test number one, which covers the first three chapters as well as the supplemental lectures that I am adding that may not come specifically out of the textbook, but are extremely important to provide some background or supplemental information to the book chapters. So they follow each week here, as you'll see, and then be sure to put that on your calendar, test number one, Monday, October 9th. You'll have a nine hour window in which to take that test by 9 p.m. The test number two, Monday, November 13th, same thing applies there. We'll be off on this Wednesday here for Thanksgiving. No classes on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. But you can see right here, I've got some other supplemental lectures that I'm gonna be talking about as far as politics of identity, which is probably one of the biggest sources of conflict in the world today. Also gonna delve a little bit deeper into terrorism, white supremacy, hate groups, cults and conspiracies. And then we'll rock along here until Wednesday, December 20th will be our last day of class. And that's when test number three will be done on that particular day. Okay, so that is the video for our first day of class talking about the syllabus in detail. Stay tuned for discussion forum. Which I'll get that posted around noon today as far as introducing yourself to the class and uh, just whatever you're willing to share briefly uh, about yourself. I would be interested in knowing what your major is and maybe one interesting thing or hobby or activity that you are uh, 
interested in. Time to wear the, uh, the get to work hat. So I will see you in class and be sure to schedule a video conference with me within the first couple of weeks. And uh, so we'll be able to engage face to face for a little bit, answer any particular questions you might have, and then we'll go from there. All right, good luck, and I will see you in class.